Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about org mode. Now I've been using Emacs and org mode since 2016. I'm hoping in this video I can introduce you to the fundamentals to get you going faster. So first things first, I'm in a directory here called org files because that's not a bad place to put org files. And what do I mean by an org file? That's any file that ends in .org. So let's create a file called myfile.org. And let's save it. And now let's uh, get into it here. Every org mode file can have some metadata. At the very least, you could put in a title, author. What happens with this metadata largely depends on what you do with this file. But you can also put options in. So for example, if I wanted to export this document to HTML and I did not want to include a table of contents, I could put TOC colon nil. And there are many options, so I'll refer you to the documentation about uh, how you can learn about those. Now the next thing you've got to know in Emacs is that there are headings. I have uh, numbered headings turned on. I'll just turn that off for the demonstration. So this is my first heading. And of course, meta and enter will create another one. And there's my second heading. And they use these little asterisks. And of course, the relevance of these asterisks is that you can do meta left and right on your keyboard to indent this heading further. Basically, they're hierarchical. Let's say this heading is about dogs. You know, we can put Beagle, German Shepherd. And let's say this one is about cats. All right, so now you know that headings are hierarchical. So using hierarchical headings is a good way of outlining your document or whatever you want to do with it. And there's also tags. So for example, for dogs, I can do Control C, Control Q, and I can put friendly. So now the dog heading is tagged friendly. And for cats, you know, I could put mean. So now that's tagged mean. And there are also something called properties. And these are nested underneath your heading. Control C, Control X, P will prompt me for a property. You see there are all different kinds here. If I choose category, you know, I could put animal. Dog is in the category of animal. And, you know, we could do the same for cats. And how you categorize this stuff is all up to you. And as you probably know, org mode is also a powerful to-do manager for managing to-do items or projects or whatever you need to manage it with. So let's actually go ahead and create a to-do file, let's say. So I will create todo.org. This option, sequence to-do, is customizable. You can have a default option or you can set it in the file. Let's just do the very simple ones to do and done. So now let's set up some to do items. Well, by lamp, shift and right will put you into a to do state. Now this is marked to do. Learn lamp stack to do. And let's categorize these computer. I'll categorize buying the lamp house. And let's say I wanted to call my boss. I'll put in call boss. And I will control C control S to now schedule when I will call my boss. So let's say uh, today is Wednesday. Let's say I want to call him tomorrow on the 13th. Now it's scheduled. All right, so let's save that. And now let's open up the org agenda, control C, A, and let's hit the A button to show the agenda for the current week or day. So when I look up the current agenda for today, there's nothing displayed. So what you have to do is add this to do file to the list of your agenda files. And there's a few different ways to do that. You can you can click in the menu here, go to the file list for agenda and put add current file to front of list. Or you can see you can do control C and left bracket as the key binding. So let's do that control C left bracket file added to front of agenda file list. All right. So now when we open the agenda for the current day, you'll see tomorrow schedule call boss and of course you can move uh, forward and backward with f and b in your agenda and if you want to look at the week you can hit w and there it is i have mine defaulting to the current day as a single day but i believe week is actually the the default view and now we have these to do items up here so what do we do with those control c a and then we can hit t for a list of to do entries and there we are. So you see categorized house by lamp computer, learn lamp stack, and you can actually 
limit these entries, let's say if you just wanted to see house entries, you could do the left arrow, the, the less than sign, and you get just house, and then you can undo it with the same key. And so that way you can, you can actually just see if you only want to see certain categorized entries. And then when you've actually done one of these things, you could mark it as done with control C, control T. That's one way of doing it. You can also use shift, shift right and shift left. So now when we open up the, the to-do list, you'll see by lamp is no longer included in there. And then you can actually, you can delete this heading or you can archive it. I've covered the ins and outs of archiving in another video on my channel. All right, doing good so far? Confused yet? One of the next most important items you'll want to know to get the basics of org mode is how to capture something. So let's say you're working in another file, you want to capture a to-do item that occurs to you and you don't want to have to go and open up the to-do file. You just want to hit a few keys and have it sent here. So the easiest way to set up a capture template is to do the capture command, control C and letter C and then do a capital C to customize or capture templates, as you can see there. So now let's insert a new one here, and you can do this with Emacs Lisp code in your configuration file. I find this uh, customized system a little easier. So let's say we wanna capture with the, the letter T a you know to-do item. So we have a key and a description, and this will be an org entry. The location will be a file, and the file is gonna be in the directory org files, to do.org. Uh, you can set a template, it's basically just a string. So you can you can have it look at a file or you can just write in the string yourself. And let's just say, we know what we wanna do in the absolute most basic capture template string would be here, asterisk, to do. And then here, the percent and question mark is where it's going to drop your point so you can start writing. So let's go ahead and save that. Saved, quit. So now let's say I'm back in my dog and cat file here and I'm, I'm writing along, I'm working, and I wanna capture something. Control C, C, T, to do item, T, capture, take out garbage, Control C, Control C, and now you see it has written that to the to-do file. And when I open my agenda, you'll see take out garbage is there listed as a to-do. It is uncategorized. And again, you can update your capture template to prompt you for a category, or we can just put it in right here, house, R to refresh the agenda. The O key will open up your agenda full screen, but there you go. Now you have your to-do added and we've captured it. One other quick thing I'll mention before we go is something called Babel, which is, is more of an advanced org mode thing, but it's really quite simple and it's really great for programmers, but I will show you here, you can actually nest bits of code and operate on them in your org mode document. So I've opened up a source code block and let's say I put elisp in here for emacs lisp and I do the most basic thing do a plus two and two. I can do control C, control C, and it asks me evaluate this on my system. I'll put yes, I believe you can customize it to not ask you, but we go ahead and do it and it gives us the results are four as we expected. So there you go, that is your quick rundown of some of the most popular and important features of org mode. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. From here, what I'd recommend you do is control H I to go into the, the help menu, type an M and start typing org mode and uh, read the documentation because today this is just the start of your journey. You have much more ahead of you. And of course, if you wanna go into more depth on other topics, you've got other videos on my channel here. Subscribe uh, to see new stuff that is gonna be coming out. And I don't just do Emacs videos, I do other things as well. And of course, um, let me know if you have any comments or questions below, but I'm gonna leave the video there and I will talk to you all next time.